hearing session? We have nobody for our hearing session? All right. Workshop items. F1, discussion, update, and development of board goals. Hi. Welcome, Noel. Thank <laughs> you. Um, I'm excited to be here, and it was great just driving into the community, and, and Tracy took me on a tour of the campuses, and, and so that was really quite nice. I, I really enjoyed that. Um, maybe a little background on myself. Um, I come from a family. Uh, I have eight brothers and sisters, and I grew up in uh, Racine, Wisconsin, which is in between Milwaukee and Chicago. Uh, so when you talk about wind storms and sandstorms, we had, you know, uh, below zero weather and when to call off events or, or not call it. So it's a little different, <laughs> but the same. Um, and I was a teacher at middle school for um, approximately 12 years, and then I became a, a director of instruction for uh, a school district in um, Chico, California. Uh, I moved from Wisconsin, uh, and uh, there uh, moved to a principalship in Durham, uh, and I learned the new pronunciations of Ammon. They're almonds, but I was taught right away they're almonds, and so I, I needed to change that pretty quickly. Uh, and then I, um, I went uh, from there to assistant superintendent in Red Bluff for instruction and curriculum. And then I finished my career at Oak Grove School District as a superintendent uh, there for 13 years uh, before I, I then retired. And for the last, mm, since uh, 10 years, I have been um, coaching uh, new superintendents. And whether it's been through a contract with the county office or with the um, Pivot Learning uh, Partners out of San Francisco, I've been an executive coach for superintendents. That uh, thing. But I, I do have one thing that might really help you because I was looking at, you know, our threats and I was looking at our declining enrollment. And so I have a, uh, an opportunity maybe that you should consider is that, um, being the eighth child in my family, in the community, the eighth baby was free. So all of the hospital and all of the doctor bills were, were uh, paid for. And it might be an incentive to have larger families <laughs> if, we could, <laughs> if we could get the hospitals and doctors to agree Incentify that. It. Uh, it, 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 I'm just looking for always an opportunity to right. increase that enrollment. So, uh, <laughs> so, so that is my claim to fame. I was a free baby. That was it. Um, if you want to take a look at the agenda, um, I, uh, our, our outcomes today, what we would like to accomplish is to have the board kind of really set the direction uh, for the district uh, as we take a look at our strengths and our weaknesses and our, our obstacles and threats, opportunities and threats, and uh, give uh, the administration that kind of direction. And our second goal is to have you uh, consider the um, evaluation procedure for the superintendent and kind of uh, change uh, the evaluation process so that it links up with the priorities that you're setting and provides a cycle uh, for you to um, have updates on that on the progress of those goals. So those are the, the two outcomes with that piece. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, like everybody's reviewed the agenda and yeah. Yeah, looking forward to yeah, this. We've, uh, when Dr. Bush came in, we did do we did change our evaluation process to kind of what I see, what you have in here, uh -huh. it kind of, it's kind of like it. So I like to see what changes from that evaluation to this one. Uh -huh. How how it's a different, how it, the, the advantage is, is it better or is it, you know, no. or, or worse or something like that. I, I just I just know we were on the, on the right step of moving evaluation to a better evaluation 
when Dr. Bush came in. So hopefully this will even make it even better. Yeah, and I'll look forward to your feedback on that because I'm not familiar with that uh, past evaluation. And so uh, certainly give us, give me comments about, you know, mm, that doesn't feel right or gee, I like that part or, or whatever. Okay, good, thanks, Bernie. Okay, so uh, I think you've had an opportunity to take a look at the compilation of all of the uh, uh, responses that I had with regards to uh, the uh, SWOT analysis. And in, in for all of our conversations, I've kind of focused on the same questions to try and elicit those types of issues that you were seeing in the district and things that you were very proud of. And I, I, I will say to you that I was very impressed with the dedication that you have to the students and children, uh, but also how you felt about the direction of the district and the positiveness that you were saying that you were feeling about your district. And so that was something that I just took away from all of the conversations that I had with you. But while, while we take a look at the uh, SWAT compilation, um, and I hope that you had some time to just kind of take a look at it, are there any questions that some of the statements rose for you that you would like to have some clarification on? You know, what does that mean when that was said? Uh, can somebody expound a little more on that? Uh, is there something that well, in the strengths category that you had any questions about? No, I have to confess, this is the first time I've seen it. Did, oh. was it sent to us? Yeah, it was sent to the email. It was in the email? Mm -hmm. I missed it, sorry. So I'll try to catch up. Okay, and, um, and we can circle back? You know, normally, uh, Well, move ahead, I'll, I'll try to okay. yeah, yeah, catch it's up. It's All right. Yeah. There were, there were two things I, I, I noted. You know, people are held accountable. Uh, that was one of the second, uh, fourth to the last item on the strength. Uh -huh. we, we started holding that accountable, but I, I, I don't know if we've gotten to that point yet where people are still being held accountable because of legal issues and stuff like that. But th that, I think, needs to be clarified. Uh, and um, also, too, I don't know how clear it is with the people who know each other and there is a sense of community. Yeah and no. Uh, yes, there is, uh, but no, there isn't because it seems like the community, is, 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 is very few people participate. Uh -huh. So is that considered the community or is it just a, the same few that we keep seeing over and over again? So that needs to be clarified. What do we mean by the community or right. the, yeah. Well, uh, and I don't mean to speak for this board member, mm -hmm. so if, uh, if you want to join in, but uh, in my conversation, uh, there was a feeling that if each board member understood kind of uh, a perspective where other, their other board members were coming from or what their value was or what their interest was, that if they got to know each other a little bit more, they could understand why that particular vote happened. So that there was uh, something about clarifying where they're coming from. And I think that was the intent of that particular piece. Yeah, and I, yeah that I understood. I just that I just need, when we go up there and start making comments on, on especially with our goals, which includes the community. Right. It, it's not very well uh, defined. Uh -huh. And so I was just, just wondering, and, and I, I believe, I, I, in fact, I agree with you that, first of all, we don't really know each other, uh -huh. and we have very few workshops to to understand where our, I, our, where our philosophy is, where, what, what goals we want to set. Mm -hmm. That's that's one of the big things I've had since I've been a board member is that we really don't get together as a group to identify what what who we are. Uh -huh. And why why we vote this way? Uh -huh. I mean, you know, I'm I'm maybe 30 years older than <laughs> most people in here, so it, it, Dr. Goose and I have a little bit different values than than maybe the younger ones. So 
there's, there's sometimes misunderstanding how we how we uh -huh. decide to vote. Mm -hmm. and so I, I think there needs to be some kind of understanding between us how we look at things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think so we're heading in that direction. I think so. With CTE, um, when they were coming in, or maybe uh -huh. Dr. Cohn and Dr. Moina, um, and then COVID hit. Yeah. You know, and like poor Diana <laughs> yeah. came on in November, mm -hmm. and uh, we haven't seen each other without a mask. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you look like? <laughs> so, uh -huh. so uh, hopefully, as things begin to open up and loosen up uh -huh. a little bit, we can. That uh, you know, our initial conversation, I said I'd love to take you to coffee, but there's no place we can go have coffee. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know. So. Okay, so Sunny, I I think I heard you say. Uh, as far as a strength that may also need to uh, not be as strong as what you would like it to be. Yeah, it's it's been that a big improvement. I mean, over the years, I, 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 I mean, I've been here a long time, and I can tell you it's been a big, big improvement. Okay. Uh, but there's still always room for improvement. Okay. And, and little things like this is what I think we need. We're eventually going to accomplish it, and then we'll probably all retire, start all over again. But... <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, good. Thanks. That was that was healthy. Any other thoughts? I guess on that note, do yep. we want to, like you said, this is our the first time with the five of us working sure. together. I mean, should we take a minute to say, hey, why are you on the board? I mean, sure. like you said, if uh -huh. some of us know, you know, Martha uh -huh. and I have been working in the classroom since our kids were in kindergarten and they're graduating this year, but. I don't know. You want to yeah. take that opportunity? To yeah. So, that'd be fun. so, I think it's a great idea. Okay. Thanks, Jamie. Who wants to start? Go ahead. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> you raised your hand. <laughs> um, so, like I said, I know Martha knows because um, we started volunteering in the classroom when our kids were in kindergarten, um, and that was when I personally became very active in the schools um, as a parent. Um, doing the school garden, the class parties, uh, volunteering volunteering in the classroom weekly. And got to a point as my kids got older, um, not, not to sound like a bleeding heart, but there were these kids that you would always like, they would come up and hug me. And my girls would say, well, why are they hugging you? And my response was always, well, there's nobody hugging them at home. And I was somebody that they saw for an hour a week in their kindergarten classroom or their second grade classroom. and so. I guess I got to a point where I felt like I was doing as much as I could at the site, mm -hmm. whether it was, like I said, the garden, the parties, whatever, and felt like a parent's perspective with my three girls kind of spread across um, the district, um, maybe that I could just have a different perspective on, on the board. Um, you know, I had teachers that talked to me all the time, principals, relationships, and so that's... Uh, Kind of, and then Kay Smith called me and asked me, could you please run for the board? So that was, <laughs> <laughs> that was, like, yeah. that was kind of what, she's like, the paperwork is due next week. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care if you're on vacation. Uh -huh. We need to get this filled out, Jamie. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, you know Yeah, for me, it was a matter of, of pride. I grew up in Blythe since I was five. I, I went to the old Margaret White School, the old, old, old Appleby School, I went to this campus here, junior high, and I graduated from Palo Verde High School, and then I graduated from Palo Verde College and went on to the University of California, got drafted, came back, got my degree in engineering. So I, I came in, and when I came back from the service, I had a really hard time adjusting back to civilian life. And after a while, I, I started getting involved with Little League, ran the Little League program for several years, Became a planning commissioner for several years, six, six years. Became a councilman for two years. And then I retired from the school district after 17 years. And then somebody approached me, like <laughs> Jamie said, would you run for school board? I said, well, I don't know what I can offer because my field was not education. Even though I worked for the district, my field was facilities. Uh -huh. So I ran, I lost the first time. Ran again, one by one vote. One. <laughs> so did Dr. Goosebrite, remember, one by one vote. And it's been a challenge because 
for me, it was very difficult to adjust from being a director to a board member. Uh -huh. It's very, very difficult. Uh, and it, I have learned, but sometimes I have to grind my teeth and bite my tongue and hold things back. Uh, but what, what I said about the beginning was pride. I have pride in this school. My class is a class of 1966, showing my age, and we are the closest class in the district that they ever had. We, we, we get together every single year. We have a trip planned for Prescott. We have a reunion afloat every year. For the last 50 years, we've, we've built a float for a parade. So there is pride in, in my class and, and myself trying to get the school district back to having some pride and, and some value when the kids get out of here that you know they're ready and at the time when i ran i didn't feel that was the case and i said well maybe i can do something and have i been effective i think so it's slow but i I've, I've been able to you know i had i worked with three different boards already and i've been able to work very closely now with you know the, the team and i think since since I started, I've seen a big, big improvement, whether that's because of me and our, the board. I'm a very patient person. I, I, I don't, I rarely get very angry. So I, I, it just, to me, it's just a matter of, of making this community something to be proud of, the school district to be proud of. And I, I think that when you have pride, you know, everything comes along e more easily. Uh, you know, it's not about what you can do for me or what I can do for you. It's a matter of, of I think, once you have pride in doing something, you, you, you become more effective and you become a better person and you do things better yeah. because of, because you have mm -hmm. pride in what you do. And that's why, I, that's why I'm still here. I wasn't going to be here, but I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. thank you, though. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your service. Um, I was born and raised here in Blythe, went to school here, graduated, um, stayed here and worked here. Um, the reason I joined was to be a voice for those kids that don't have anybody to stand up for them. I know I'm going to stand up for my children, but who's going to stand up for those kids that don't have somebody to go and ask questions or question something that, for you know, an answer that was given to them. For me, it's really important. I've seen a lot of people that were doing wrong and not being held accountable for what they were doing. For me, it was a something I wanted to make a change, see a change in. So that's why I got on the board to help make those things and to hold people accountable. And I think with our administration and what our, what our district is right now, I think it, we've come a long way and I think we are holding people accountable. And I've seen a big, big change and it's something, like he said, to see pride in. And I went to school here in Blythe, and I enjoyed going to school here. I enjoyed my high school years. I don't see that for children. And I'm hoping that someday we'll get that back. So that's why I'm here. Awesome. Thanks. And I called her when she was on vacation. <laughs> I told her when the paperwork was due. <laughs> 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 You're a formidable combination. Dr. <laughs> Hughes? <laughs> oh, I spent my career in education, spent a lot of time in education, and teacher, principal, superintendent, and um, uh, I've had property up river probably 45 years or so, and so Blythe has always been near and dear to me. And uh, my six years as superintendent here, um, I gave my heart and soul uh, to to it, and um, I I feel the spirit that that there is in in um, in Blythe. I mean, I'm proud to be from Blythe, and and um, so I I felt uh, I was asked to run for the board. I ran for the board, um, and that was about how many years ago? 18 or something like that, um, and. Um, with my experience, I've been able to keep, to try to guide and direct the, the various boards that I've worked with uh, to keep them on track and, and um, let them know, in my opinion, this will work. In my opinion, this won't work. Um, and 
And so I think I've been valuable in, in that respect. Um, I love this community, and um, that's probably off the top. That's about all. Thanks for the service. Yeah. Anna. Well, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Well, <laughs> well um, I wasn't born and raised in Blythe. I moved here when I was seven years old, so basically m all of my life has been here in Blythe. Um, I went to the elementary schools here, Appleby, Margaret White, um, uh, middle school, high school, attended the local community college. Um, uh, I've always been a people person. I worked at the local doctor's office for a number of years, also at one of the local uh, pharmacies. I still have my license as a pharmacy technician. I um, by working with people as my um, children were in school, I volunteered. Um, you know, I was always on top of their grades, helping them uh, with whatever I possibly could. Um, my, my main reason for wanting to uh, be a board member, nobody called me up and asked me to run for board. I actually, for a number of years, had been wanting to do this, and my husband had said no. He did not want me to do this. And my kids had said no, um, <laughs> we don't want you to do that, only for the simple fact that when they were in school, I, I was always, you know, in the office checking how are they doing with their education, and because it, education to me was important. I come from a very large family. I have nine brothers and six sisters. So um, me being number 13, I was at the bottom of the totem pole, and I, for since I turned 15 and a half, got my driver's license, it was my responsibility to make sure that I drove my mom to the doctor, doctor's appointments out of town and whatnot. But, the biggest reason for me wanting to do this is because I want to give back to the community. I want to give back to the community what the community has done my family. Because there were several um, teachers, mentors, coaches um, in the city of Blythe that gave to my brothers and sisters as well as to myself. And every year at Christmas time, unfortunately this past year, we were not able to do it. We, this, is, this, this is would have been the fourth year we had started to put together um, a toy giveaway and we were doing it at my mom's house because she enjoyed seeing children and my mom's 92 by the way and um, she enjoyed seeing the kids come by and whatnot but my biggest thing is you know and the reason we wanted to do it is we had all decided what the community has given to us we want to give back to them so and, and that's my reason for want, you know wanting to do this is because i want to be able to help and inspire and mentor and do whatever I possibly can. Thank you for that. Tracy, I want to ask you, I want, I want you to, <laughs> you said something to me today that I was proud of and, and I, uh, and she says, I just love this community. I just, I just love this community and I want to be a part of this community, and I, I just want uh, all of the kids to have a voice. And I was really proud of you, uh, you know, with that, so. Is there anything else you'd like to say? <laughs> 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 yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. Yeah, your voice changed a little right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and so we all have that common thread through us about we're here to make this a great place even greater. And so um, with that, we started uh, talking a little bit about um, your re reasons for being here. There is another side that I want you to think about, and, and that is about who are you personally? What, what, what are your likes and dislikes, and, and what's, what's your hobbies, and those types of things? And so, Diana, we're going to start with you on that piece. Well, hobbies, um, I enjoy, I enjoy embroidering. I, I have a commercial embroidery machine and I enjoy embroidering. I volunteered a number of years uh, for each club. I worked with the girls and we did quilts. I helped them do the quilts and they sold them at the fair. That was part of their project. Um, um, you know, my children raised lambs. I, you know, I was involved in that as well. Um, you know, being a leader. Um, uh, volunteering, you know, volunteering, spending time with my family, being out in the desert, 
um, this past year actually has truly, I said all of the years that I've lived here, I have actually found a lot of things to do out in that desert, and it is so beautiful. So spending hours and hours, I'm not a river person, but spending uh, numerous hours out in the desert, uh -huh. you know, I, I truly enjoy that, and um, spending time with my family. Is there any food that you would not eat? Actually, of course, I'm allergic to it. Oh, that's a good thing not to eat it then. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing. Good. Who is, who is next? Did you? Uh, oh, I was going <laughs> 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 to... Reverse <laughs> order. You, you guys um, had time to think. And no. now they, yeah. <laughs> I have centered around um, the river and the desert. Um, We've raced jet skis and gone to world finals a couple of times, um, uh, dune buggies, um, flying airplanes. Um, uh, oh, 22 years on the fire department, volunteer okay. on the fire department, EMT, and um, uh, camping. Uh, about 25 years, I've been to every Boy Scout camp, girls camp, high adventure camp. Etc. through the church or Boy Scouts mm -hmm. and um, so camping and RVing um, but living on the river boating obviously uh, fishing fishing up in the high Sierras or up in Beaver Utah mm -hmm. up in that area um, shooting um, got a few guns and uh, just plinking you know and um, I'm sorry did you say plinking Plinking, you know, plink, 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 shooting. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, it just wasn't a term. Oh, I, was, like, I, like I just like need some help. Yeah. I need some help. No, I stay out of caves. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, uh, oh, I played b a lot of basketball, uh -huh. uh, and um, anything athletic, um, anything outdoors, yeah. pretty much, and. And reading, I'm spending a lot of time reading these days. Um, that's that's all. I, I'm I'm active. I, uh, this last year with this cancer bout that I've had, uh, it kind of knocked me out. Last summer, I just don't remember kind of thing. It it was bad. Uh, but um, I enjoy the summers here the most because I live on the river, and we've got boating and swimming and fishing and and jet skis and, and all, you know, those kinds of things. And then out in the desert, all of the, you know, the dune buggies and the yeah. Polarises and blah, 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 you know, the, all of those kinds of things. So um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm an active person. Yeah. And is there any food that you would not eat? That I would? Not eat? You know, I don't regret, looking back, I don't regret anything. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You did, um, this mask. Is there any food that you would not eat? Oh, food. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Uh, you know what? Since, since I had the radiation in yeah. here, anything hot. Uh, and my wife is um, Mexican, mm -hmm. and she cooks a great Mexican food. Mm -hmm. But she loves that chorizo sauce. <laughs> <laughs> it just burns my throat. Uh. <laughs> Although I eat a lot of Mexican food. Yeah. Um, uh, no, there's, I, I have a great ap appetite, uh, but, but the, um, the radiation yeah. knocked out my taste buds oh. for at least six months, oh. and now they're coming back, oh. thank goodness for yeah. that, because everything was like oatmeal without brown sugar, oh. you know, no matter what it was, it yeah. was just, I mean, if it was hot food, it would burn, mm -hmm. but, um, no, right. not, not too much that I wouldn't eat. I'm glad it's coming back. My hobbies are traveling, spending time with my family, scrapbooking, signing parties for lots of people, um, also paddleboarding, working out, doing CrossFit. Um, mainly just spending time with my family. That's the main thing for me, yeah. enjoying my kids before they leave me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So I only have two boys, so once they leave me, I know, you know, they're going to be on their own, but 
that's what I raised them for and just enjoying them as, mu as much as I can before they leave. Um, we travel a lot together. Um, of course, of course, with COVID, you know, slowed us down, but you know, I already have trips planned, ready to go. So, where's your first place? You're ready to go. Hawaii. It's already planned. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and what about that food? Any food that you would not eat? Cake. <laughs> you know, that never entered my <laughs> world. <laughs> just, just didn't. You know? No, I'm not going to eat that. Uh. <laughs> I'm I'm well, I got two hobbies that I've been doing for years. I collect pennies because huh? I can't afford quarters. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I started collecting when I was a little uh -huh. kid, pennies, so I got some really old pennies. Uh, I also collect Coca-Cola items oh. as a hobby. Uh -huh. I've been collecting for years. And I also collect Vietnam air uh, stuff that I used during, during that period of time. Mm -hmm. And I have a really good collection of stuff that is, used to be you know, something that we wore now you see in museums. Uh -huh. So they become museum pieces uh -huh. now, and not so much, and, and they're becoming worse. I collect uh, things from air from my grandson who's been in the military, so I have, I compare their, their equipment with their uniforms and stuff like that compared to ours. And people come over and they see it, and they they, they see the difference between my grandson and what we wore and what they wore and what the uh, equipment. So it's very interesting when people come over and they see, I call them my war room. Full, full of e war equipment and so it becomes very inter interesting especially for my classmates because we had 60 classmates from this high school yeah. end up in the military that, that's a large amount for that period of time yeah. well there was a Vietnam going on uh -huh. so I collect that I also get involved community in, I'm very involved with people come to me all the time for advice you know when they're dealing with construction or, or issues with ordinances, uh, that's kind of a hobby now. Uh -huh. uh, people come to me all the time uh, to get drawings or clarification and stuff like that. And I still do construction drawings. It's it's more of a hobby now, uh -huh. but it's a hobby where I get paid. <laughs> so, oh, okay. so it's it's kind of a good hobby. Um, I'm I'm just active with my family, trying to keep up with my little grandsons and granddaughter. It's it's uh, at my age, I just can't. Yeah keep up it's very difficult so uh, I just try to enjoy my family and, and you know uh, keep up with yeah. with the, my other so family. you must have a coca-cola room you must have a no, room. they're both in the same room it's my, oh. my wife only gave me one room. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um, I, I, like I said I, I'm pretty active still uh -huh. I, I build things all the time I, I I'm just I, I can't sit still uh, yeah I, I don't travel as much like we used to. I, I, as my traveling days when I was young in the service was enough for me. I, 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 I settled down, raised a family, and my interest is not to travel so much anymore, but to stay home, maybe go to the river, the desert, you know, barbecue, fire out in the desert, you know, build a bonfire, stuff like that. That's, that's what I enjoy. Oh, wonderful. And mm -hmm. what food is it that you won't eat? Anything healthy. <laughs> <laughs> my wife and I cannot eat. She eats very healthy. Yeah. Uh, I, I just can't. <laughs> it, 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 it just, I never grew up. Um, I grew up with beans, rice, and potatoes, and that's my favorite food. Yeah. yeah. I don't eat too much meat. Mm. My wife will eat everything. Yeah. I think, you know, I, I'm not. I, I don't know. I don't really have a, a, a food that I wouldn't eat. Except spicy food, I can't eat. Like Dr. Good, I cannot eat spicy food. I grew up with it, but I can't eat it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, mm -hmm. Jamie. Um, I have three daughters, as everybody knows, so my life pretty much revolves around them. Uh -huh. um, I enjoy gardening and baking, cooking, pretty much everything agriculture. We spend a lot of time showing cattle, so I spend a lot of time at the cattle. Um, in the community, uh, like as Dana mentioned, I'm the beef leader for the 4-H club. I love coaching softball. That was just terrible this last year to not get to coach softball. Oh. Um, love everything athletic, watching sports, playing sports, coaching sports. Um, enjoy going to the gym, uh, traveling with my husband and my girls. Uh, like Martha mentioned, we have those trips planned, but 
hopefully they'll happen this year. Um, so that's pretty much it. And food. Uh, <laughs> just not, not there, huh? Not there. Never going to happen. Yeah. Well, good. Well, good. Uh, and that's part of trying to get to know one another and, and trying to find connections amongst one another and then understanding one another uh, and having at least having a voice that you can express who you are and, and why you're pushing for that piece for uh, students. Um, so we did take a look at the strengths piece. If you wanted to s shift uh, to the weakness area, and if there is something in the weakness area that you would like to have some clarification about, or, some, or, or any questions, uh, or a comment that you would like to make about that piece, Can you put a star down? That's I, I was going to ask you. A star means that one person commented on that, or is that uh, right? Uh, okay. Uh, yes. And um, and then, um, well, the number of stars are how okay. many other uh, okay. board members also had that. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure if that's we rated it or. That was yeah. It. Well, <laughs> to be honest with you, I really thought about that piece, mm -hmm. and I said, you know, I'm going to put a star there because okay. I want to indicate that it's one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's good. Thanks. Glad to see that, that at least four of us here put the loss of student learning as a real concern during the COVID pandemic. Mm -hmm. I think that um, we all have to be extremely aware of what we're going to be dealing with coming back. Um, not just the learning loss. I think the, the mental health, the social well-being, it, it, you read these articles and it's just really devastating. So I'm glad that we all saw that that was a, a real concern that we're going to need to make sure we're supporting everybody mm -hmm. moving forward with it. Do you have an equation for pa uh, parent involvement? You know, that's been an and issue for many, many years. Uh, you know. Equation or something? How how you can resolve that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the equation doesn't equal <laughs> out all the time. It just it seems like uh, that's been one of the most difficult uh -huh. uh, issues, trying to get people involved, especially parents, especially the, with the generation that we have nowadays. You know, looking at the weaknesses, I, I find it interesting that we had commented that the CBO needs more experience, but yet it was also one of our strengths where it said that the CBO was respected and there's confidence in the budget numbers. Right. So. And it, it, it also shows kind of the diversity of the board, you know, with, uh, with those uh, comments. going through the list, you know, construction projects. Um, I think with between Milton and Steve, they're starting, and Tracy's starting to address that. Um, 
just a lot, like I said, a lot of the things on here. Um, uh, let's see. Stakeholders, I feel like we're working, you know, that's something that we're definitely working on, especially during the time of COVID. Communication has been key. Um, board members not familiar with their board member's background. We just took care of that. That was, uh, that was brought, brought that <laughs> now, one now off you, the list. Now you know, <laughs> all the, you know all the dirt now. Done, is we're like, good. That okay, one's yeah. good. <laughs> Well, and I, and I think that um, uh, having an opportunity to take a look at them and then you'll have an opportunity to, to think about because when we try to set the goals for the district, we are also going to also take a look at, well, what are the strengths of the district that can support that goal because you want to be able to lead with your strengths because that is something you're good at and, and to be able to do that. And then when we take a look at the obstacles or, or the opportunities, uh, then we need to be aware of them and how are we going to overcome them. And that's, that's the charge that you're going to give your administrative team. So if, if there aren't any other questions on the weaknesses, we can move right into the opportunities. And if you want to take a look at those opportunities, um, and if you have any questions or comments or thoughts. as far as where it says same goals and vision for the past several years yes what was that well i think the um the thought of <coughs> in the conversation was that there's an opportunity here to refresh mm -hmm. the vision and the goals so that they are more aligned with uh currently and that they are and I'll just use this word that they're a little more vibrant, you know, uh, with that piece. So that was a conversation that I think the board member was trying to express those opportunities. I would say the same on some of on these opportunities. I, I feel like we are we are working towards, you know, realizing some of them also. Uh -huh. You know, with the CTE partnership, working on that, and the college, uh -huh. um, you know, reassuring parents that the schools are safe. That was important to every board member. Uh, we did the safety updates at the, all of the sites. Um, so I do, I think we're trying to realize some of these opportunities. Right. Yeah. Intendant leadership team is extremely important. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's a good thing to say, you know. It, it yeah. is. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, it is. Mm -hmm. it's having some continuity and the longevity, mm -hmm. uh -huh. that that will address a lot of the other things. The community, any of the, you know, the community concerns, community not being aware of things. If we're able to finally have some continuity here, I, I think a lot of those weaknesses will fall off. Uh, like this is my personal take on it. What, what I think also made, makes a good team is that we've been hiring locally or stepping up within and I've seen a past where we've hired high school principals two years gone I mean you know principals that we hired from outside you know, two years and they're gone superintendents three years and gone you know I, I think this has been the most one of the most stable teams we've had in a long time you know we, we've got a good team at the sites you know we got a good team at the district level and they seem to be working together. And it, it, I, I don't see the conflict that I used to see, the arguing, the, the fighting going on, uh, even within the board itself. Uh, I don't see that happening anymore. So there's been a big, I, I, I don't even know how to say it any plainer, but there's been a big, big change in the last nine years. Uh, and it's been a, a good change. 
I mean, there's still a lot to do, but if, huh? if you would have been here nine mm -hmm. years ago, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, it would have been a different story. Any other thoughts? Then we'll move on to any of the threats. For declining enrollment, I, I think that you know, as the schools improve, hopefully, hopefully your families choose to stay living in Blythe instead of moving to Indio and commuting to the prison, or you know, that tends to be the typical. That, that's I would say that's the stereotypical situation. Is okay. I can go to Indio or Palm Desert and commute to the prison an hour and 20 minutes versus my 30 minutes from Blythe. So I would hope as the schools improve and parents get more comfortable with it then they will stay. Uh -huh. And other, you know, other things, the river, the desert, the things that they love, uh -huh. um, if they're securing their kids' education, then they won't necessarily jump ship. And is the commute shorter from here no. than it is from Indio? Absolutely. They still are willing to do that to live in India. Yeah. And that's not just your school. That's your, you know, everybody wants target down the street mm -hmm. type of it. Oh, you know. okay. Okay. But that's Families, families don't enjoy living here any longer. So, they'll com the par the parents, mother, father, will commute instead of bringing their moving their whole family here when the community doesn't have anything for their family to be entertained, or even their children. Their children get bored. There's no activities for them. The town doesn't have a theater a mall or anything to entertain them, so they'll hmm. Harder probably on the children, like for me I grew up in a little a town much smaller than Blythe, so when we moved to Blythe it was just the heat that killed me, not the population. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think as you know, an adult, <coughs> I love Blythe, so I'm comfortable here. Yeah, I wish there were less homeless people harassing you outside the stores, but, you know, there's only so much you can do about that. Um, but I think for kids now, like Martha said, there is not much to keep them here. Mm -hmm. And that's a major concern. You know, it'd be great if these kids were coming back and teaching school here, you know, these ones that are going into education. I, even my daughter mm -hmm. um, that loves agriculture, going to an agricultural college, um, I, I don't foresee her coming back here to run the farm. Uh -huh. um, because I don't know that she would want to put her kids in school here. Um, so that's just a, that's my personal perspective on right. it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's definitely I, I think it's a community issue too. You know, it, it's something that it's sad. Huh? It's sad. It's sad to see a small town to decline. Mm -hmm. And I've only lived here but 15 years. When I went, when I went to high school here, it was so much fun. We had spirit weeks. We enjoyed them. We homecoming was big. It's big right now, but it was much larger back then. I mean, I remember one time in high school, the In-N-Out food truck came and brought hamburgers to us when we were on campus. Things that made it enjoyable. I mean, it breaks my heart when my kids say, I don't want to go to high school. I do not want to go to school anymore. I'm over it, I just want to get out of here. It breaks my heart because I enjoyed all my four years in high school. That's a significant thing about oh, yeah. ha having that joy. Oh yeah. And the pandemic has been devastating. 
for many of our students. And it's not so much the, the, the virus that came along, but it was even happening before uh -huh. before it happened. Uh, you saw the difference in the, in, the, in the school years. We have, I mean, our reunion homecoming is big and blithe, but if you start looking at which classes are attending, you don't see the, the 2,000 students there, the, 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 the 1990s, you see the, the, the 50s, the 60s, 70s, 80s, then after that it just drops. Uh, what changed? I mean, uh, I don't know what changed, uh, you know, the culture, uh, just the kids, uh, something causes, and that's what I'm talking about. There's, there's very little pride in, 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 in the class. Uh, I mean, they, for one, for a few times, they were used to making a float every year, and then, then nobody would participate. And that that fell, you know. Athletic programs at the middle school, you know, we no longer had the middle school. That fell off. So that kind of got the high school athletic program even more difficult because now you didn't have kids from the middle school going up to participate in the high school level, you know. And those kind of things. And then coming from elementary into high school is it was a big shock to. It's still a big shock to a lot of kids. I mean, for mo for the you know for some, it's just a big difference. Uh, yeah. Not a problem. Yeah, yeah, it's just a big. To me, that's it's that's a lot of things is different, and I look back and see what's different. You know, the, the culture is different, the people are different, but there still should be pride in that campus, uh -huh. and be pride proud to be a senior, have a little bit more advantage when you're a senior. I mean, we had a senior area where a lower classmen can't go. Mm -hmm. You know, that's no longer there. You know, there, there was something to look forward to but to become a senior. Way back. Way back. Uh, there isn't <laughs> anymore. So a lot of things have changed. So, I mean, that's that's a big shock and culture change to get the kids back, like you said, to come back and say, well, I graduated from Palo High School. Mm -hmm. You I know. Think also, I remember growing up, even my older sisters and you know brothers. I come from a family of eight. Um, I remember my older brother and, his, and sisters, you know, talking about the good role models that they had at the high school or junior high or even out at the elementary schools. We all talked about the same teachers. We all went to the same teachers. I mean, and we had role models. We had encouraging people. I mean, one of them that stands out to me is Mr. Scott, you know. He encouraged all these children to go to school to do something with their lives, you know, and if it wasn't for him, some kids wouldn't have gone. Would learning the opportunities to, you know, succeed to keep going forward, even if it wasn't college, but to do something. I think that's, you know, like I said, something that brings back pride, the role models. People don't understand, and sometimes people don't see how much a counselor can affect somebody, how much a teacher can affect someone by just saying, hey, you may not want to do this, but how about this? Mm -hmm. And some kids don't know what's out there for them. And if they don't know, they're not even going to try because no one's bringing up anything. And that's the thing about being, you know, in a small town. When you don't know, you're just not going to do it. Coming from, you know, my parents are immigrants. If they don't know, they're not going to try because they're afraid of those things. But you have to try. And if no one's saying, hey, there's other things you could do. There's financial aid. There's other things that can come, you know, that can work for you. They don't know, they don't know, so they aren't even trying. And for me is, you know, like I said, serving the community, talking to people, explaining that there's different things for them. I mean, try at least try. Role models, if there, if there are some good, you know, some people that would just go out there and talk to people, like I said, people don't know. And I really think that a lot of that has to do that with a lot of our teachers. Just as uh, Jamie was saying, they don't live in Blythe, so they don't know what Blythe has to offer. If if the, they actually lived here, they at the college we have the exact same problem. Majority of the faculty members that work up there don't live in Blythe. So whenever there's a function that the students are having that's on campus, do you see any of the faculty members there? No. Why? Because their office hours or classroom hour or days are Tuesday and Thursday or Monday and Wednesday and those are the only two days that I need to be there and my family lives over in Riverside you know San Bernardino anywhere but Blythe so I, I need to get home 
And I mean, I, that's probably one of the things here too. I don't know exactly what our faculty is like here in, you know, at the different grade levels, but if they don't live in Blythe, they're not here to experience everything that we that live here experience, so that makes a big difference. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a question for you, Noel. Sure. Blythe can't be, you know, the only town in the state of California dealing with this, especially with the mass exodus from California these past few years. Right. What are, what are, how are they handling it? How are school districts dealing with it? I mean, it really, is there, can changing a school district stop declining enrollment? Well, uh, you're a little unique in that, um, that there aren't other districts in proximity to you because what's happening in other parts of the state is that districts are inventing themselves around the themes or whatever to try and attract students from outside of their boundaries. Mm -hmm. Programs in. or right. whatever it might and be to bring So a number of charter schools right. have developed and those charter schools uh, are taking uh, students mm -hmm. and and, Helping enrollment. and there's a, a very big advertising campaign. There's a big public relations campaign <coughs> of attempting to attract uh, students in the uh, local newspaper where I'm in. There's at least three or four advertisements uh, of other districts opening up their enrollment and uh, having a lottery to select students to come in is some of the ways that they're trying to deal with it. But there's also the, the other part is that there is a constriction of schools and districts because there just aren't as many students there. And so you're having to do, for budgetary purposes, having to constrict uh, that piece. So those, that, that's, some of the districts are, are doing that type of uh, They're really battling for students. Right, right. They're battling each other for right. students. And they talk about cannibalism. Right. And that's mm -hmm. kind of, you know, what, well, what they're well, talking about. What I see a big problem for us too is the mandates, the rules, the regulations are becoming, you know, you, you need consultants, you need experts to even handle it. I mean, that costs districts money. But that's becoming a big, I think that's one of the biggest issues in California is the mandates, the, the, you know, mandates without funding is one of the big problems that I used to see a lot. And uh, they mandate something, and like especially the county is real good at that, taking away, uh -huh. you know, t giving up their special aid and giving it to the district. Here it is, you know, uh -huh. uh, uh, where's the funding? Okay. You know, stuff like that, uh, uh, community schools and stuff like that. You know, all they say is we give it up, you guys take it over. But the, the, the lack of funding, that's, that's, that's a big, big issue with the, when we're depriving uh, other kids uh -huh. because we got a mandate, we have mandates for this thing and the rules and regulations that it just, it's killing us. Well, and, 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 our, and our staff can't keep up with it. And, and there are strings that oftentimes get tied to monies, incentive monies. And you can apply for grants and you can look for grants, but that has another layer to it with, with who's gonna run the grant and is it, is it even beneficial to try and get that grant in a short term um, on one. So it's a very difficult uh, situation. Uh, and uh, I, I'm hopeful that, it, that uh, um, the new infrastructure that is being proposed right now has a component in that infrastructure bill at the federal level to increase the federal dollars in the special education realm. And if, if the federal government finally steps up, because at, at one time the federal government uh, indicated that they would be covering 44% of the special education cost, and they're now only covering 13%. So if your special education dollars were being uh, better supplied, that would free up your general funds so that you, your programs would flourish again. So I'm a little hopeful, but I'm not holding my breath, you know, because. 
Um, so now uh, we're entering into the physical exercise portion of this program and uh, you have dots on your table. And you get to spend three dots uh, on each of the categories. And so, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to identify what you consider the most important issues that we should be dealing with, okay? And, and I'll give you an example. Uh, if uh, I heard um, that uh, one of the things is that you wanted to um, do, the district is headed in the right direction. Oh, well, we'd have a conversation about that, but it might be keeping your, um, your administrative team, a strong administrative team working together. So if you want to spend a dot, you can put your dot right there. And if it's uh, another one that you want to um, do the vision and goals are good and fair. If you want to spend a dot there, you get to spend three dots per, per board. And what we hope to in the end, we'll stand back and we'll try to take a look at that and we'll have a conversation. And this is the whole listening phase that Tracy and her cabinet are going to be wanting to hear from you uh, so that they can uh, represent the direction of the board, okay? So if you want to get up and you get to spend your dots and you can spend three here, three on the weakness areas, three on the opportunity areas, and three on the threats areas that are c of concern or importance to you. Any questions? I've got two extra dots. Is You're that a lucky man. Rich <laughs> man. Yeah. <laughs> But I will share with you that I know the colors. No, <laughs> 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 yeah, that's okay. Yeah, here. Just for the board. Okay. Want to propose to as well? Uh, sure. <laughs> now, Lois, now. Okay, yeah.
positive change continue. And when um, I'm going to ask you a little bit more about what are the elements of that culture change that has happened. And if you can just think of words that would describe that change, that would help us as we start building strategies to make certain that that culture uh, is uh, fed and uh, increased. For us, I think communication, um, they, um, like Tracy, they communicate. Um, they keep us updated very well. I mean, they're always letting us know when something's going on. So those would be the... Okay. Someone brings something to our attention and we uh, contact um, our superintendent and let them know what we've heard. You know, they listen to whatever heard out in, you know, in the community. I think training for the board was a big factor. The three of us went, actually with the superintendent at that time, went to training uh, as a, for a board member under uh, uh, master's. Oh, the CSBA. Yeah, C CSBA uh, training. So that was a big help. Uh, you know, uh, I was already aboard for one term. Uh, we had Martha was new, mm -hmm. and uh, Jamie was fairly new, and I think we're sending uh, uh, Diana. But to me, that was a big, big open eyes for the for the new members to see what we how we should work together, because uh, you know what we did in that those classrooms was actually practice going over things and I think it was a big help. It kind of brought us out of our shell mm -hmm. and, and helped us develop as a, as a, as a team, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that, that was a big factor. And I think seeing other boards from other districts there as well and hearing their stories helped us as well, you know, to understand and oh, to yeah. get a little perspective of how other schools are running. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're all gonna have our own opinions and that's okay. You know, so trust. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a lack of trust from the co community standpoint in uh -huh. the district uh -huh. um, for a long time, and um, even for me as a parent before I was on the board, mm -hmm. um, you know, I would go and meet with the director of curriculum or whatever. I was that parent, <laughs> and uh, I think now that there is some trust that if a community member comes to see the superintendent, mm -hmm. they trust that the situation will be handled that, you know, or if they come to any of us, they know we'll pass it on. Mm -hmm. um, so so yeah, I think that there's some trust in the community now for, for the workings of the school district. Mm -hmm. uh, the other element that received was uh, the strong administrative team working together received the next highest uh, number. So, um, in uh, investing in that development of that administrative team, would that be a good characterization of that? I don't want to. Uh, I'm just trying to uh, put together what a uh, what that might look like in their training and their teamwork and, and how they are working together. I don't know. I don't know if it's an investment. I think we. Really, on that, that time, Dr. Bush, when he started this team, uh -huh. I think we relied on his expertise uh -huh. to pick his people, uh -huh. you know, and, and to bring in certain people and to um, elevate certain people up into the district level. Uh, I think us over kind of watching what was happening and making sure that he talked to us and he said, this is, we're bringing this person in. I think uh, I think that's how the team developed, uh, using his experience and his expertise to bring the team that we have now. I think a good thing about it was, in previous years, people were just getting a hookup with a, a good job, where now they were investing in people that they knew would be able to be an asset and make a good team to run the district. So that's a difference where now it's a good team and they work well together with the superintendent. So that going, keeping that going, keeping that going very is important. An, an important part yep. of keeping that. Good. Right. And so 
now I'm going to move over to these areas of uh, improvement and a lot of student learning came out uh, as strong as students are not learning the basic skills. So, um, do you want to talk a little bit about your concerns about this particular piece? The loss of uh, the loss of student learning, a real concern during the COVID pandemic. For me, as I mentioned earlier, um, the, the learning, but also the social and emotional well-being of so many children here, mm -hmm. that um, that have literally been sitting at home in an apartment, right. probably by themselves, usually. And because of the demographics of our community and the poverty level, you know, a lot of times in unsanitary, unsafe conditions. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I think it's devastating. Yeah. Uh, I, I understand the reason behind it, but I think it was the decisions have been really poorly made when it comes to affecting children, in fact, affecting their lives. Yeah. And I mean, we're seeing it now with kids going back to school, you're what, at 50% of the kids are going back. Mm -hmm. and. And a lot of them, it's for the parents. Well, you know what? It's a lot easier if they stay online. I don't have to worry about taking them to school. I don't have to worry about picking them up. This is the easy way out, yeah. regardless of the fact that, okay, your child needs that social you know, interaction. They need their teacher. They need the education. They need somebody to tell them, you are going to do this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we approved the policy to uh, with the 50% grading and some of that. And that was a really hard thing for me because it kind of goes to the basic work habits. Uh -huh. I was raised on a cattle ranch. Hard work was your our whole life. Yeah. Um, and so it's you get what you work for is my mentality. Mm -hmm. But I had to switch it a little bit when it came to that, uh, that, that particular one because so many kids here don't have, they don't have anybody, as Martha's mentioned and Diana mentioned, they don't have anybody in these times, in these uncertain times helping them, pushing them, you know. So, I, like I said, I think I, I understand the decisions behind COVID, but I think it has just been devastating <coughs> for students, especially your underprivileged, impoverished students. I can't even imagine the, the ramifications we'll deal with in the next what, three to five years, probably. Yeah. Right. But I think there's a frustration out there, not only with students, but parents, but with teachers. I mean, I, I, I can see their frustration that these kids are on their comb tablet and like my grandkid, I got to go in there and keep turning off things because here's the game going on and the teacher's right here. And Oh yeah, I'm on the classroom and playing the game and that's not only him. I, I mean, it's happening to a lot of other kids. I, I think a lot of it is just the frustration of not having control of, your, of the class and, and the kid and so he got into that, now he's in this bad habit. And now when he gets to the classroom, it's, it's what's going to happen? Yeah. It's, it's going to be a, a relearning. It's a difficult situation. To subscribe to the principle that teachers are important in the learning process. And um, when, when there's not a teacher involved uh, and we're leaving it up to parents who may not be there, or who may be at work and leaving it up to the students to get online and, and so forth, uh, of course there's going to be learning loss and, and um, teachers are important mm -hmm. and face-to-face um, -face learning is important, classroom is important, mm -hmm. without it it's going to be loss. And a lot of the parents don't realize that the student spends majority of their day with the teacher they're in school and you know their primary resource mm -hmm. so I think it's going to be extremely trying for teachers um, you know with having my three daughters at home you would see um, if they were out in the kitchen or you would see the teacher would ask a child to respond and instead of responding they would just go black it would go black their stream would go black yeah. and so they there was there was no way the teacher could control that but how devastating for a teacher that keeps trying keeps trying to get that kid involved and they just shut them off. There's no repercussions from the parents. Hey, this is your job, right? I mean, that's my perspective on education right now. That is my children's job. That is what they're, mm -hmm. they are there to learn mm -hmm. and to respect their teacher. And so, I, like I said, I can't even imagine what teachers are gonna go through when we bring kids back full time. I'm just gonna kind of tease something. 
components of this piece, and I, I want to flesh out a little bit on the academic component, and there is a social emotional component. I want to ask you um, what weight would you give those particular components? Or is that a, 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 a nature? I don't know. Can you separate them? I don't. I don't know if it, it, they can be separated. I mean, is, is it both? Go hand in they, hand. They're hand in hand. I, I. I was trying to separate it. I said, but they're both. I. I think they're both a factor in. in yeah. Okay. So but, and I think it's kind of situational. Mm -hmm. it, a lot of it is going to depend on the environment the child's coming from right. when they come back to school. So when we build, because we have over here um, a culture change here in the district, the strength that we have of working well together, mm -hmm. and if we can use that when we start taking a look at this weakness area and combine that with their basic work habits, and maybe this becomes not necessarily basic work habits, uh, or, or should I ask, what is meant by basic work habits? relating to Jamie what you were saying about their job or in honey do you have an I about the, the work habits uh, just being able to sit down and and do your assignments you know before they used to bring their books come home okay you have homework yeah okay get a snack then start it uh -huh. now you got to go into the Chrome tab because otherwise you take the word of, of, of the child and of the student and Oh, no, no, look at all the homework you got. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so in my case, I print out everything and set it up. Otherwise, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. And, and so it's, it's, and I know it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of paper. <laughs> it's just, and a lot of ink. But it, 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 help, it helps for me to know that, hey, you got all these assignments. Mm -hmm. and, and so the, their, the habit of the, uh, the student who used to come home and said, oh, I got this homework, is now turn off the computer. At the, at the, when this started, he used to say, oh, I don't have no homework. Uh -huh. Well, I didn't know any better because I didn't know where to go to to look if there was any homework. So uh, I, I think the habits, it just they just acquired bad habits. It's just, and they got accustomed to being lazy. Backing off. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I also think it's society in general mm -hmm. and technology. Uh -huh. and I would say that there's a lot more distractions today for kids right. than there were. Um, I think social media is the destruction of society personally. So I think kids are dealing with, you know, like Sunny said, you, for me, I grew up with, I had a stay at home mom. You came home, you sat down, you did your homework, and then you had to go play outside. You know, you couldn't do that until you, and so again, I think it's situational too, the, the home environment. Um, but you had those basic, you know, I mean, try to find the high school boy that can use a drill now. <laughs> That's just, it, it just society has changed kind of. Okay, so I, uh, oh, I let, let me comment. I'm, I'm thinking what I was listening. Um, there's different modes of learning, you know, um, auditory, visual, kinesthetic, uh, and you get those in a classroom setting. But when the kids are at home, and they're not in a classroom setting, there's, you, you don't, yeah, you don't get that interaction, you know, and that's re relates to the work habits, I think. And I think a lot, a lot of what I've heard, and because I don't have any kids in school, um, but from things that I've heard is um, basically the parents' discipline. Some of the students um, will log into the classroom and one of the things I, I feel that they needed to continue was you need to get up in the morning and even though you're not going to school, you get up, you 
perform everything that you normally did as if you were going to school. You need to make sure that you get dressed ready for school. Don't sit in front of that Chromebook with no shirt on because that's not acceptable. And you know that right there is it's, it's basically you know disciplinary habits that students need to learn at home. But I mean that that's something that it's a challenge for the teacher as well because I've heard they've had to say you know um, you know Jane. appropriately you know we're in class or whatever or you know, it's that you can't come to class without a shirt on so you need to make sure that you go and put a shirt on so you know it's, it's every their their world has been changed completely and I understand that but I feel that um, you know um, that shouldn't change their so I think the goal is that when we have our students back, that we are having a component developing those habits yes. and that mental health piece and academics that we are trying to make up the loss for. Mm -hmm. Would that be accurate? Yeah. I see two heads nodding, three heads mm -hmm. nodding, four. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's move here. Opportunities continue to improve the CTE partnership. Received four uh, dots and uh, keep the superintendent and the leadership team together. Uh, five dots with that piece. So that's something that um, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about this uh, CTE partnership at all. I, I think it's important. I mean, we're, we're doing. Um, you know the old college to CTE programs, and one of the reasons I, I I always push this is because you know a lot of our kids are not are not graduating because they're not they figure they're not going to go to college anyway, uh -huh. and and I think th we need something that gets them ready when they leave school, a and not everyone is going to go to college. Uh, I, I think it's important that they learn some kind of trade or some kind of skill before they leave to get, have an idea what what they can do mm -hmm. and, and have some type of experience mm -hmm. which they don't have right now and and it's it's important to me mm -hmm. well, I'm sorry no no go ahead I was just going to say it's just like Danny said you know how many of them know actually know how to hold a drill mm -hmm. or you know change a tire you know, there's lots of things, you know, uh, do they, are they capable of taking the cables off that battery and replacing the battery or, you know, do, do they know? Uh -huh. Oh, exactly. They don't even know how to pump gas to put in the car. So, you know, th there's, there's a lot of, I uh -huh. mean, vocational is very important. And, uh, you know, they, they, I, especially for the ones that don't have any plans or any intentions of going on and furthering their education how to live in in the world today so are, so you, are you talking life skills or are no 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 just all together. I'm talking about you know whether it be carpentry or uh, uh, automotive uh, yeah, yeah exactly you know learning how to you know fix their vehicle uh, autos you know you've got welding you've got electricity you've got you know building trades you you know just vocational programs the the that our tech, you know, that the students need to learn, even the computers, you know. If, if, you get the, if you get the basic, like I did when I went to high school, I did the welding, mm -hmm. the basic electrical. Well, I didn't know I was going to go on to become an engineer. Well, when I became an engineer and I had to design the penetration on steel and you welding, well, I knew how to weld. So I, I, I knew, now I learned how why the penetration was important with you know with what kind of metal but if you don't know the basics and, and you go on to a higher education you really have no idea of 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 of, of anything else the, the basics and, and to me high school is is a is a important to to obtain basics before it's a tool that you move on to to get a higher education and it may and and like auto mechanics may lead Maybe to a, a, a some engineer design who designs eventually a car, you know, because he knows the basics. I mean, that that's what I see as as for a career training is that 
high school is important to learn the basics yeah. and to be exposed and to be exposed to the, to that environment. Yeah. I think the community college it's a little below that. It's all part of that, and that, that yeah. so you know we have the programs with the mechanics and things like that, and and continuing those programs. Our, our mechanic on the farm went through that program, and our farm wouldn't run without him. Yeah. He's been there for eight years now. Young man, you know, grew up, graduated from high school here. So I think keeping those things, and Blythe's always going to be an agricultural community, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you have that aspect. You, you need your mechanic and, yeah. you know, the, your electricians, those things. Um, so keeping that, those programs going with the community college and giving the kids a little more opportunity. Mm -hmm. I mean, so that they know how to unclog that drain. <laughs> <laughs> I also see uh, keeping the leader, uh, superintendent leadership team together. So that is uh, pretty clear throughout here that the uh, uh, board is very interested in making sure that stays together. Yeah. Uh, I'm moving over here and uh, five of the dots uh, about declining enrollment. Uh, four is uh, Technology advancements, keeping the staff uh, up with, uh, is the staff falling further behind in technology advancement? But um, do you want to talk a little bit about the technology advancements piece? You know, when I started the board, we didn't have Chrome tablets. Uh, that was uh, nine years ago. And uh, so that's how far behind the district was uh, on, Chrome, on uh, technology. The students had no technology in the classroom except their cell phones and stuff. But uh, you know, since then we've gotten uh, technicians, and and uh, and we're looking into a director of uh, is it technology, whatever it is. Yeah. And so I think we're moving forward, but we we've got to make sure that 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 we're keeping up, uh, especially with the teachers. The teachers. Students seem to know more than the teachers do. It's, it's, you know, and that's the nature of the yeah, beast. But that, that's, that's, uh, you know, th and they need to be, you know, constant, be upgraded, and, and they're teaching on, on the on, on the computers to be ahead of the students. Cybersecurity is important. Yeah. And then I see uh, the declining enrollment issue. And, uh, so uh, I'm trying to take a look at actually how many goals that we have, because if we have w far too many goals, then we just aren't, don't have the bandwidth to do all of them. And so I have a uh, feeling about one that may not be as important as others. We had uh, basic work habits, we had uh, loss of student learning during COVID. And Tracy, if you have some thoughts, uh, it would be good for you to chime in also. Some of them could be, could, could be combined. Yeah, like the loss of student learning, mm -hmm. I think it could, it has, may ha I mean, I would say with the declining enrollment, you know. Positive change in the culture of the district is also goes along with keeping the superintendent and the leadership team. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just combine these into three goals mm -hmm. and we'll bring them back to you. Mm -hmm. All right? Yep. You know, I don't think we can do very much about declining enrollment. Mm -hmm. We can provide the best education we can, and a lot of this is going to be up to the city council to the Board of Supervisors to provide things out here to a attract people to stay. Right. But on the other hand, um, uh, the job opportunities out here for people to stay here are limited, are limited and becoming fewer. And that's going to cause people to move out of town and thus the declining enrollment. I don't think we have too much, um, too much of an opportunity to quell um, declining enrollment. Right. Like as Noel mentioned, we, we can't cannibalize from other districts. There is nobody else out here. 
so it is. It's you know that's the state of the community right now. Um, is we just make the schools as good as possible. Right. And on the really on the budget side, have to deal with the declining enrollment. And the levels of students are there because you can see it. And I kind of feel that a lot of them may probably have turned to the homeschooling, especially right now during the pandemic. But, um, you know, I feel that once we get opened back up, hopefully that right there will change and that the parents will see the need for their students have to have the interaction with other students and, you know, involved in the sports and whatnot. I'm making the school inviting. That, that, that's, I mean, go eat at our cafeteria. I mean, it's the same when I when I went to school here. It hasn't changed. I mean, it's not inviting for the kids that are used to something. How can you compete against McDonald's or Jack in the Box when they're inviting? You know, they're more inviting. And I'm not talking about the food. I'm talking about the atmosphere. You know, it's, it's not inviting. Uh, is our campus inviting? Do we have enough electives? You know, uh, uh, do we offer kids something to, uh, to, uh, to when they, they want to come to school, to enjoy the school? You know, the activities is the one big thing. You know, the, the, uh, the, our, we, I mean, we used to be very, very active in, our, in, in Spirit Day. You know, we had, used to have a Slave Day. We used to have all this kind of stuff, which is just gone, gone, uh, gone How aside. How we go back to that one? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, well, it's, 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 it, 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 yeah, yeah it, it was it, it was a way of it's a way seniors collected money for a senior trip. I mean, I mean, it, it's we, we we bought underclassmen. Yeah, I, it, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't anything bad. It wasn't, no, 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 no. I I know, but, I, but yeah, yeah. And and, and and I don't want to see the headlines in the news. No, no, I don't either. I, I don't want to. Especially see especially now. I, uh, especially yeah. now. They, uh, I would just call it a, a spirit a spirit day. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, it needs to be inviting, and I, 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 even the, even the way the campus looks yeah. needs to be inviting. Yeah. Was it the senior patio? Is that, that's what it was. Yeah, called, it used to be a senior right? patio. Each each um, class, you know, had their own yeah. one whole yeah. roll that you, area that you would decorate during Spirit Week. Yeah. I remember walking early in the morning to get here so I could get started. Uh, <laughs> I was so excited. Yeah, <laughs> those are great memories. And that's what we want our kids to have. Yeah. We just want our kids to have it's those great memories. It's going to be one of the yeah. best, it can be one of the best times in their life, yeah. their high school year. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I, th I think we have a pretty clear idea of the board's priorities, and uh, Tracy and her team will start uh, constructing uh, what those goals are, and you'll have a chance to take a look at those goals and make some comments or some thoughts that you might have with them and then those will be the marching orders for the district as to how we're going to move forward in the next year or so okay and leading into that then um and and i just want to make certain that we understand it is the job of the board to set direction it is the job of the administration to set the strategy and tactics of how it's going to be accomplished. Mm -hmm. Okay? Great. So now the next piece is uh, trying to take a look at um, the evaluation uh, tool that is uh, before you. And it's the only stapled one, I think, uh, yeah. there. And what, what this is attempting to do, it's attempting to put into um, the evaluation process, the direction and goals of, from the board. And you can see uh, there, are, there are a couple of facets to this particular evaluation tool. One of them is a narrative about a board, uh, narrative statements about how they feel the direction is going or the accomplishments of those goals are being uh, done. And then there is a ranking system. And there's a ranking of, of uh, one to five, uh, and it, it's just dependent upon how the board um, uh, feels about if they like the ranking or if they like the combination or if they like one or the other. 
So I want you to think of this as somewhat of a draft for you to consider. But when you take a look at goal number one on page two, so we would state goal number one on page two, and um, then this the benchmarks are, uh, this is what we're going to do uh, to accomplish this goal. And you can see that there are a number of one, two, and three tactics uh, that are what they're going to do and what it will look like when they have accomplished it. So for example, if I were to take, um, and I'll just take declining enrollment because we probably won't be doing declining enrollment, mm -hmm. but uh, I would draft a tactic to that particular goal and say, okay, I am going to now do an outreach to the city council for more recreational activities that I'm going to try and do with the declining enrollment to see how we might be able to increase the, um, the number of families wanting to stay in here. So that would be a particular tactic that the superintendent is going to use. And number, he, uh, Tracy will have a second tactic that they might do as far as advertising. A third tactic might be for her to try and take a look at um, uh, exit interviews with parents who are leaving the district and what, what the parents are saying. So I'm just trying to show you some tactics and then Tracy will be providing the comments about how that, uh, how that goal and tactic has been working and what, uh, what she has done with that. And then uh, she would uh, give you an update on that uh, mid-year and then she would provide you in May a final uh, about that. And then you will have opportunities as individual board members to make comments about um, how you feel that uh, tactic or, or that goal was implemented and an opportunity at the end of the year to have a final ranking and a final commendations or, or things that you would like to say. And there may be times in which um, a pandemic happens and all of this goal setting kind of gets shifted differently. But uh, hopefully the superintendent would then be keeping you informed about progress on that goal and whether that goal is relative or, or um, being at least being able to be implemented. So, and it's, and it's kind of simple that way. There's a goal, there are tactics, there are updates on progress in those tactics and then the board has an opportunity to provide input uh, at the mid-year if a course adjustment has to happen or how uh, they can support the accomplishment of that goal. And, and then at the end of the year, you have an opportunity to say, hmm, I want a, a different goal. We do another goal setting or this is an important goal I want us to continue to work on that uh, and then uh, indicate how they, you would like to see a greater emphasis or a change in emphasis in that particular goal. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. and, and the important part is going to be, what does it look like when it's successful? So that we at least have a standard that we're seeing, that, that we agree that this is what it looks like when we have that kind of uh, success in implementing that goal. And then you get to measure that uh, as far as how uh, the um, goal has been implemented. It, it's basically what we did before, except we didn't have the ranking. Okay. Uh, that, but but we, instead of tactics, we had strategies, they called it. So uh -huh. same thing. Yep. But uh, it basically it was the same thing, and, and board members added their comments and stuff. But uh, the ratings, uh, I think back then, was kind of an issue, you know, one, two, three, four, five. Uh -huh. or, uh, but 
I don't have no problem with the rating. It's just and it's really up to you because uh, that's one of your jobs is to evaluate the superintendent. I'm kind of of the old school, <coughs> excuse me, that um, you have goals and then you have specific objectives mm -hmm. and then you have a whole list of activities to accomplish the objectives. But goals, I've always been taught that goals are timeless, measureless directions to go. But, but the, you can't measure the goal. An example, our current goal provide a positive, safe, and healthy environment for all students and staff. Okay, how do you evaluate that? Well, there are certain things you can do, and those becomes your objectives, and the objectives kind of are <coughs> what I think would, would be written under number one here, right. you know, the objective. And so maybe I'm having a problem with terminology, but, but <coughs> like, I like the the board goals that we have here, I don't think anyone can disagree with the, the board overall goals, but as far as what we're talking about here, it seems to me to be the objectives, the, the things that you can really do and get your teeth into, and you can, that's what you can write down in your comments. Does that make sense or am I off base? No, I think you're, you're on the base, it just has a different name of the base. Uh, with this, uh, I I think that the the goal is a time is a, is a larger uh, direction, uh, and your objective is actually could be called the strategy that you want to win the war or whatever, and the tactics are the are the activities that you're doing with that piece. And so I I think it's the same. It's just the terminology is a little bit different with it. I guess the like kind of to go along with what Dr. Goose said, because the goals are, they should be constantly being worked on. They, they don't change year to year. Those are always what we are striving for. Uh, maybe more like a yearly objective, because you know the superintendent can only do so much in a year yep. to attain these goals mm -hmm. or to maintain these goals in some cases. So maybe if there it was more like yearly type of, okay, this is this year, you know, focus on these objectives that will, you know, work towards maintaining these goals or attaining these goals. Uh -huh. um, and so Jamie, I'm just gonna ask for a little clarity. Uh, and so okay. my questions are just to better understand that. So are you saying that the current board goals that are here that um, that some of these um, directions of today would fit underneath those board goals with more focus in a particular way? I guess well for said. me, well said. yeah, for me, that would be it. The, the, I, I don't see, I mean, we are always wanting to do these things on this list. Uh -huh. It's just, yeah, these are specific, like to drill down into these yeah. and things that need to be in so I guess, like the doctor Goose said, these are these are timeless. We always want it to be safe. You know, we always want to retain our teachers, uh -huh. have those relationships, those kind of things. Okay, what are we going to do this year to keep them going, to keep working towards those goals, to maintain those goals that we feel like we have accomplished? Right. So you know, the positive, safe, and healthy environment. So this past year, it would have been, you know, what we did the safety upgrades in all at all the sites for the safety. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, what do we do with the nursing department? You know, for the healthy environment, those kind of things. What are we doing on a yearly basis? Okay. To, so, to so, so I'm just gonna rethink. I I think I'm hearing you say, but please correct me, that you would like to have the the directions that we have worked on today uh, have an alignment with the current, at least some of the current goals, and I think they do. Uh, that we find them underneath those. And those will be the focus of this board's direction for that year to the administration. And that's just my thought, but I mean everybody else has, you know, because I like with the with COVID. I see two. Uh, God two willing, we're not going to have to deal with COVID again. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's the focus this year. Right. And it, it will probably, be, you know, not necessarily just this year because no. the ramifications are going to be, you know, long-reaching. But 
that's not necessarily a goal that we want on our board goals mission statement. That's just, I, I don't know, that's just my opinion. Uh, no, that's my keep, opinion. Keep Who the goals the way that they are, but you're going to go. My way of looking at it would be like, this is the, the way I would envision it. Okay, this is the board, this is the board goal. Sorry, I have to put my glasses on. <laughs> Provide a uh, positive, safe, safe and healthy environment for all students and staff. And then say, for example, if you have the little drop down that goes underneath it, then um, you would have, you know, what we've done to provide that for our students. And, and you know, you just continue with all of the others because you, and, uh, and I, if I agree yeah. with what um, Jamie and Dr. Guth are saying, you, you don't want to continue to change your, your um, board goals from year to year. You want to change whatever Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. what, the, what the current objectives are. Yeah. What are your objectives for this year? Exactly. You know, and, and in, in, in three months, I would hope that the same board goals that we have here would remain. But underneath, I mean, and, and not necessarily listed on, on the board agenda, but um, what we have under all of these are those, those objectives that that are going That's to be put vision. down here yeah. and so it's I, let's not get hung up on terminology necessarily i don't care if it's objective or whatever but in terms of the board goals i think the ones that we have i, I reviewed them before i came down here and i thought yeah yeah that covers it yeah okay let's keep doing that but we're going to do a lot of things under that specifically and that's what we're talking about here. Okay. I guess I would have a question for you. Uh, our goals are pretty high level goals. You okay. know, we're talking about there would be drill downs to accomplish these goals. Okay. Is that what most goals in school districts look like? I mean, we, when we created these goals, we looked at other districts. We looked at, you know, in our area, we looked at Brawley and Banning and some of those. We actually looked at what their board goal, goals were in, in, you know, in helping us to set these. Has, are we off base here? Oh, I don't think you're off base at all. Okay. I think, um, I think I'm trying to have a better alignment with the actions that need to happen with these particular goals that you have. And you, today you gave us the direction underneath these goals. Now, they, uh, she, the administration won't be able to do all of these goals, but you've provided the priority and the direction of the administration to go underneath, for example, the goal uh, to improve student achievement. Well, there's a lot up there about improving student achievement, and you can do that through your academic, but also with your social and emotional piece. So underneath each of your goals, there are uh, opportunities to, to be more directional about how you're going to approach that goal. Couldn't the, this is my take on it again, but couldn't the superintendent be evaluated, not necessarily on these high level goals, but on those yearly objectives? Well, that's, that's, that's why. Right. I mean, so we would be taking this down to, you know, whatever the three we come up with on there, right. that is what the evaluation would be on, not on these, you know, like right. Dr. You said, these are rolling. They, it's their timeline. Right. Yep. Are we okay? Yeah, it's it's okay. But you know, the goals were done. I think you you were the only board. You and I were the, still board members at that time when these goals were done. No, we did these goals. Over. Did we do these over again? Okay. We redid them. Okay. Well, I don't know if, if, if maybe they need to be updated or somehow, uh, I don't know if, if they become obsolete. Well, I <laughs> you know, think I, I mean, you know, like, like, you know, like this one here says, the second one says, uh, to, to, uh, to prepare students for graduation and to be successful and responsible citizens. You know, to me, to be responsible citizens or should we say something other than responsible citizens because our job is not to make them responsible citizens. Our job is to educate them, to ensure that they become successful. 
Now that's what I'm just saying. Do do we do we just kind of upgrade these goals to meet our time? Uh, are are they are they are they up? I mean, are they are they obsolete or they become obsolete? You know, because I mean, do we include something about technology in it, or is that another dot underneath something? Right. You know, that that's what I I don't think I'm. Lenny, I, I kind of think that, you know, where you say um, to prepare students for graduation to, and to be successful and responsible citizens, that right there, our vocational programs, our CTE programs, mm -hmm. that right there is helping that student to be learn to become a responsible person because they're going to learn to be successful and they're going to learn whatever vocational it is that they need, whether it be welding or plumbing or autos or whatever, and that right there is going to trigger everything so that they can learn this is what I need so that I can be able to continue uh, get a job or whatever oh, I, I, I understand that but it didn't seem it seemed like we're going beyond uh, on that statement I, I just I just I, I mean, this amount I don't understand what what we're trying to do right now uh, is it that we're going to take these and then just put like a, a, oh, yeah, a, a yeah. dot underneath it and say okay this is the, the the main goal, like number one, and then we 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 put uh, those other ones underneath this. Is, is that? I think uh, the way I see it, mm -hmm. uh, I see uh, developing three goals here and linking them to your board goals here okay. as, as almost like a subset underneath your board goals and. That's that's how you're wanting to try and implement these broad goals. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I was asking you to give me words and talk about that because the, the conversation is what you're valuing and how it is that you're wanting the direction of that goal to be, uh, the activities to, to be there. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the purpose. I think Diana gives a perfect example on the CTE partnerships. That whole you know opportunity up there following huh? following pretty directly under the second goal on our list. Yeah. Yeah. I I you know, I have no problem. I just um because that's a, a nod there and a nod there. What 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 we what the superintendent would produce and you would produce is something that that we can grade in other words exactly. yeah uh, that's that's what we it, yeah. in, the, in the past i just remembered oh yeah he did a good job what do you think oh yeah he did a good job that that was the evaluation <laughs> <laughs> and, and i have to share with you as yeah. a superintendent that uh, it's not a, a a healthy thing for uh, i i always wanted to have good feedback about what am I doing well? What yeah. do I need to do better? And how how are we going to look the next year? So, okay. So I think we've we yeah, I think so. are hearing clearly from the board exactly where. And then there is uh, this page that talks about the evaluation process, and it's it's basically kind of a a, a sequential calendar of. of what to expect through the year according with this evaluation document. And so you'll you'll get this evaluation document and you'll you'll have this in, in your uh, January meeting, is it in January? That they'll provide an update to you uh, of that. Tracy will be submitting to you uh, the goals and her tactics with her team and we haven't really talked about exactly when that's going to happen but uh, it's going to set the direction of the administrative team in the district for next year and then then this calendar the idea is that at the end of May and June you're going to have a full evaluation of what what happened well and you set the direction again in June for them to launch into the next year. I saw all five heads nodding, and so that was really good. <laughs> you, are, you are really working well as a team then. How close are we? Oh, 
uh, were over. Well, any, any questions or thoughts? What worked well for you today? I'm trying to get uh, feedback evaluation. And maybe I'll just send you something and then you can just jot that down. What worked well, what didn't work well. I think for personally, the whole process is, is great. Okay. To get here and actually get to talk things out, even doing this and with our docs, kind of seeing, and it, it really feels like as a board, um, we're all we're really aligned on a lot of our thinking. We're mm -hmm. all kind of, you know, we're we're on the same page with a lot of things, and so that's always encouraging. So that as long as you know we keep doing this and keep working together and understanding, you know, each other's beliefs on certain certain things or certain goals, I, I think we can only benefit from it. Right? We can cross that one off. <laughs> <laughs> Did we get too close? <laughs> <laughs> okay, how do we, how do we, if in the future, like I, I really talked to Tracy about looking into the possibility of, of the middle school being reopened. Uh huh. How do we process that into the system? Um, well, do you want to have, I mean, are you asking for it to be a board discussion item? Well, I don't know if this is a good time to do it because, I mean, I spoke with Tracy and she said this would probably be the good time to do it, but I don't know if it is or not, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's been an issue within the community itself. Uh -huh. And we ha we're here for, uh, uh, you know, a year and a half or so, so it's a good time to look forward this is, and, and move slowly with it. Uh -huh. And see if it's a, if it's a good idea or bad idea or whatever, uh, and what the board thinks about it. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we bring that into in, into evaluation or the process to to move on forward? I I would think we would need to honestly have it as an agenda item or other business and a meeting and a and then and have it something, something that we had a discussion on. Um, and kind of got everybody's feedback on before we ever got it to the point where it was. Um, an, another way of also looking at it might be to try and do a survey or try to get how the community or the parents are feeling about your K-8 schools versus a middle school. Whether it is an issue or not an issue before you spin your wheels a lot on that particular piece. And it would be good also to hear from your staff about how they feel the culture at their school is and what that looks like. Part of that, part of that already went on before all this uh -huh. happened and, and uh, but it's, it's kind of obsolete data. Uh -huh. uh, and I, I kind of know what the feeling is out there. Uh, I just need to know what the board view is. And so I guess we bring it up as a discussion item yeah, because it's not something, I, like you said, I, for me, I, I'm not hearing that at all in the community. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe we need to think about doing some sort of survey or something like Noel recommended to, to get, you know, good, because we all have different people that talk to us in the community, you know, whether it's at Ace or the grocery store, it, you know, different people are coming up to all of us. And so um, probably to get a, a, a broader spectrum there of, of how the community feels at, at some point. It, 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 it started way before the virus started and it, it just it kind of dropped off. Uh -huh. uh, when Dr. Bush was here, we uh, had discussed it. We did some many things and, and it, uh, things were go moving forward, but then it, it kind of dropped off when the, when, when the, uh, you know, the virus came into effect. And so, I, I'm just trying to bring it back up again to see what the views are. Cause we do have a, a new, a new set of board members, uh, mm -hmm. and I'd like to see what the feelings are. And I have an idea what the community is 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 wants, but I don't know if that's changed. I think before COVID, yes, I've heard people asking about it. But I think right now with COVID, and us just saying how our students are so behind, going to be behind when they come back. I think that needs to be our focus before we try to open up another school and then just, you know, we're going to take, try to get, you know, our teachers and we're going to stretch them trying to figure out where to put your good teachers. And we, you know, if we're going to bring back junior high, we're going to want really good teachers and a good superintendent. I think 
because where our focus right now is bringing these kids back and getting them, you know, where they need to be and helping them, you know, catch up. I think I, you know, wouldn't want to see us taken away from that by opening up, or, you know, opening up a school or junior high. I mean, yes, I would love the junior high to come back, but at the same time, I don't want us you know. No, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't talking about doing it because uh, we, we're going to be in this site for a, a couple of years. Right. Now is the time to do it slowly. Oh, like just for, to, for to like talk to me? Years, two years from oh, now okay. and, 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 and do it slowly. I, I don't want to see it the way it happened when it closed down. Oh, okay. I was, I was part of that uh, and, and it, it, just, it just wasn't a good thing. And I, I just want to know what the, what the community feels and what the board feels. And, and we've got two years maybe to do it and yeah. I, I don't want to rush it yeah no. i do not want to rush because it, 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 it the way the middle school was run before it closed it was very bad yes so well, it, it was very a, bad. it will be very important for you to think about the messaging that you will need to do That's right. to make certain that the community is clear that it will be in a future right and the yeah. thing is too i was a parent of a student that was here left here at the end and it was really hard for my son uh -huh. and for that grade. Uh -huh. So the experiences that they went through, and like he said, it was really hard because it was a not a good experience them by themselves here. And when they closed it, that's what I'm saying. I, I would future, yes, because we want to make sure that we're going to put the effort into getting a good system going where we're getting good teachers, we're getting good, you know, super, you know, principals and that we make it work. Yeah, and, and, and Tracy, is, is the reason I brought it, because Tracy is, has the experience in a middle school. And I, I, and I told her, I don't want to rush this. It needs, yeah. to, it needs to be over a, a, a couple of years, not just boom. Yes. It needs to be, because it, it's going to be, uh, you know, teachers, like, you know, credentials and, and stuff. I understand that. And I, I, I just want to make sure that, that, you know, when this campus closed down again, that we don't end up losing it. To a, uh, to a charter school center because it's not being used. Or have plans for it. Or have plans for it. Uh, you know, I, I just, I just, it's been idle for several years uh, until now. And, you know, we may end up losing this site uh, to uh -huh. something else. And I just want to make sure that, that we have something in plan. Uh, I mean, I've heard other ideas, but uh, I, I just want to not rush the middle school, or if you want to call it junior high or middle school, you know, I don't know. Uh, I just don't want to rush it. I, I want to make sure that it's done properly, that when kids come to this campus, that it's one, it'd be one of the, not what it was before, but something that they're going to be proud of and learn from it. And, you know, with electives and, and teachers that aren't just subs. That's, that's what you had back then, just subs. It, 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 wasn't a good, it wasn't a good place to be back then. Well... Yeah. And I have to share with you, and this, I'm sorry, I'm just going to say it because I had a chance to look at your FICMAP report, and I have a little concern about affording it. That was actually going to be my next thing was I, I would like to see us look at that, get an accurate um, standpoint of the community on this. Uh -huh. But then in, the, I mean, we've listed three threats, declining enrollment, these things. We need to look at the actual feasibility of doing this, if it is feasible with our budget, with decline enrollment, yeah. with and, and rolling, out yeah. of, rolling off of COVID. And, you know, right now, you know, everybody's flush with COVID funds. Well, that's going to end. Obviously. With our one-time money. Right. But the one-time funds are going to go away. So I think yeah. we have to take a really, even from a board perspective, take a really hard look at does the community, you know, what's the community support there on it? And then, you know, if they're interested in that, is it really feasible for us to do it? And, and, and that's a question, but my, my thing, thought is always, too, that we're here for the best interest of the student. Is, is, is the seventh and eighth grade the best place for them to be uh, on the campuses that were not designed to be seventh and eighth grade? Are they getting the value that they should be getting uh -huh. with the money we're spending at the elementary schools? Uh -huh. Yeah, we're saving in administration. Yeah, we're saving here, but what, what, what are we producing? You know, I, and those are questions that I don't know. Yeah. And that's what, that's why I want to take it slow. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to take it fast. I want to make sure that, that this is done properly. And in reality, when you stop to think about it, year and a half, two years is not slow. 
the, I mean, time goes, it's going to go by. Time goes by fast, yeah. Yeah, so, but, but no, I understand exactly what you're saying. And maybe that would be where, you know, parents would decide, oh, you know what, I'm going to keep my kid in school here. And I'm not going to, you know, yeah, whatever. I mean, we don't, we don't I, I don't know, I don't, I, I have, the I mean, numbers I or whatever, know what they I are. Don't no, we don't, we don't, we don't know. We, we don't know. It, it is just that I, I don't think that uh, the, uh, what we're getting at the seventh and eighth grade level, uh, you know, talking to teachers before the virus started, talking to administration, talking to people about it. Uh, it's just that it, it, the schools were not designed for seventh and eighth grade. They're, they're not getting no electives. They're not getting what they should be getting to prepare them even for high school. Uh, you talk to the high school teachers, and they're not happy either. Mm -hmm. So, um, I suspect that this is a topic for another meeting rather than this one. True. Yeah. And so you'll have to handle other business and start at the very, very basic. And mm -hmm. I, and I, I have to second Martha on this. It, to me, with what we're dealing with right now, this is not a priority. It's something that we can no, all no, discuss. I, yeah. But I just think we have so much. Tra actually, Tracy and the administrative staff has so much on their plates right now that I, I hate to throw something on it that like you also said to kind of second what you said this needs to be thoroughly investigated that because right. realistically too that middle school at the time was failing terribly mm -hmm. so if we look at the numbers and we look at what they were where the tests were where things where kids were going in and compare them to you know we, we don't have that data uh, you know, we don't. I don't know what the difference is on the testing. Yeah. I had one that did K through eighth, and she went into the high school. I felt very prepared, yeah. but that could be different at each school. That was my particular child at the particular site they went to. So I think there's got to be a ton of research, including the feasibility for on the budget before we can. My and like you said, other business and my son did very oh. well at the elementary school and came to high school and was very prepared. And I'm not, you know, saying, but I'm saying, you know, some of them can, and they did. Um, you know, other people may not feel that way, but it can be done, like she said. It can be done. It, it has can. been done. Yeah. It, it and I'm, and like I said, someday, yeah, I would wish that it would go back to that. But like we said, if we don't have the enrollment and say we don't have enough students for that, then, you know, it, like you said, if we could look at it in the future and that can be something at least that we know, hey, someday we do plan on it, because we do. I mean, I know I would like it, you know, to reopen. Well, I, I, I just, I, and I, I spoke, you know, with the superintendent before this and, and, and we thought that this would be mm -hmm. appropriate to bring it up here, so I'd bring it up, but if you could, I know, because I, I need to know. You wanna, yeah. Well, you know what, let's do it under some of the future agenda items. And we'll just kind of start looking at Well, I, d I just want a discussion. I don't want to, I don't want to push it. I mean, I don't want them to overwork because I know they'll come back to school. I just want to make sure that you guys are aware that, 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 that everybody's thinking about it. I, I don't, I don't want to rush it. I, that's why I said yeah. we've got, you know, a couple of years to, to think about this and, 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 and plan it slowly. If it, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Do the research. Do the research, but, uh, I, I mean, it, like you said, as far as you saying that, the money is uh -huh. not there right now. Uh -huh. So maybe in a couple years, as long as we know, hey, eventually we would like to, well, because, you know, uh, we even the um, Bush, he did speak about some the future, and he did have plans to reopen it at a later time, our superintendent before. Yep. Uh -huh. I mean, so we knew that uh, someday, I mean, so hopefully, you know. No, I, like I said, I, mm -hmm. I just, I just, this has been <coughs> actually going on for a lot of years, even before, you know, with Dr. Bush. And so I just thought it maybe it's things, things are starting. We're here, we're out of that building, and we're going to abandon this in a, another couple of years from now, that we need to start thinking what we're going to do with this campus. Yeah. Do we keep Probably it? Probably a topic for another meeting. No, I, yeah, I understand that. But uh, that's good. All right. That was the other discussion on the system. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Other business? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything else for us? I today? don't. Thank you so much for coming, and I appreciate your flexibility as coming uh, this evening. Thank you for your Thank time. You. Yep. Thank you for coming so, in. do we have anything un other under other business or future agenda items? All right. Meeting adjourned. Thanks for